So my next story is about the greening of the planet and uh, China and India's role in it. So a new uh, study um, came out and was in a press release by NASA and it reveals that over the uh, last two decades, the planet has substantially increased the green leaf area as observed by satellite imagery. And um, so this is the, this was the equivalent of uh, the area covered by all of the Amazon rainforests. So that's pretty substantial, about 5% uh, of increase in green leaf area. And interestingly, China and India are estimated to be responsible for about one third of the increase and not by CO2 fertilization, but by intensified agriculture and reforestation efforts. So China in particular has planted a lot of trees and uh, India has made progress in intensifying agriculture, meaning of course you can harvest more crops per acre of land. And uh, this leaves a lot of uh, room for forests to regrow. So other countries that have uh, increased their leaf area are in the uh, European Union, Canada, Russia, Australia, uh, also the United States and Mexico. Um, and this is different from a previous study that I think was uh, published in 2016, which attributed a lot of the leaf area growth since 1980, uh, or 1981 rather, um, to CO2 fertilization and increased warming and a bit of increased rainfall. So I don't know if the new study uh, corrects that a little bit, but it, there, there's some time overlap between the two studies, but the recent growth is uh, specifically attributed uh, at least by 33% to the Chinese and Indian efforts to, uh, on probably not really efforts, but China at least has uh, done some reforestation work. And I find this a very positive message because it means beyond the what nature gives us it's our environment is under our control to a much greater extent than many people think so we can if we want forest area and we think that's healthy for us and our environment as humans in the service of human flourishing we can actively pursue that and we have far greater control over what our environment looks like so in, in, instead of this super pollut polluted area large parts of China now grow more forests than before. So this story strikes me as generally true, but I, I should say that when I hear, and, and important, and part of the reason it does is because I know some of the mechanics involved, as in I know the, how CO2 relates to plant growth, and I know that you know, industrialization is adding more CO2 to the atmosphere. And then I also know the mechanics of, or some of them of, you know, how we can control our environment, including things like forests. But when I hear the term study, I cringe because there's just this refrain all the time. Study shows this study says that. And it, it actually relates to my point earlier about journalism, where people just think, oh, well, journalism is just reporting reality study often means to people, oh, well, they just, they're just observing the facts. Who could argue with that? They're just studying. And in reality, so many studies that are cited are actually speculation, and they're often very wild and inaccurate speculation. So I'm curious, Stefan, when you're consuming different things that claim to be studies and that have that authoritative mantle to them, how do you process them to try to distinguish those that are that, that really did demonstrate a point well versus those that are saying something that's extremely speculative or unlikely. Yeah, obviously details matter. So, so study the word has, uh, has a bad reputation with me because there are so many just claims that are sold as facts. In this case, particularly, uh, it's of course bound to the empirical fact that the leaf area as observed by satellites, that's an objective measurement by a satellite instrument. Now there's some you know, uncertainty involved, of course, but it's, it's largely difficult to cheat and there's no real incentive to cheat. And uh, so the attribution in the case of China and India also sounds uh, pretty sound or solid because you know, 
they have some kind of record how many trees have been planted over by specific programs over that area and how much the Indian agriculture actually has improved in productivity. So this this sounds very solid. Of course, you have always have to be concerned with you know what's really in the realm of attribution, what's really speculation, and what is hard fact. So we've talked about this in with pollution and also with the climate issue. There's always this tendency to report something like a model projection as a true fact. So for example, often we hear something like, oh, we know this percentage of uh, warming over the last like five decades uh, is attributed to human emissions, for example. And that comes from comparing model projections that don't use CO2 as an input and model projections that use CO2 input. And these models are tuned to take CO2 as a central player in warming. So you are not, uh, you know, testing a hypothesis against a sort of uh, empirical testing in a laboratory, but you are sort of comparing two model results and you, you don't know whether that model is actu actually accurate. So there, there's a big difference in quality between these, of course. I'm glad I asked. I like I like those points. I like that you're mentioning that. I mean, the way I take it is one one point is that you're you're looking at different claims and then you're integrating with things that you have confidence in already, or maybe with things that you don't have confidence in and seeing maybe sometimes it's you see oh wow this is this is based on this kind of method that I don't have confidence in but in this case integrating with with knowledge that you have confidence in and then what was the other one oh yeah and and also is understanding the nature of the evidence including by what means it was collected so i, I like both of those and that those sound like two two valuable guidelines <laughs>